Let us all that we can to build a better future. We here at Harlan's Media stand against censorship. Um, and, you know, we've been hit not once, but seven times unfairly by YouTube. Um, but the one thing that I'm proud to say is that we don't censor here at Harlan's Media or on Chicago Corner. Um, we have to make sure that, you know, we're, we're, we be as consistent and correct about stories that we are covering. I mean, that's, that's the thing. It's, it's our name, our reputation on the line. Um, but unfortunately now what we're seeing in this corporate media landscape is if you step out of line with anyone within the establishment media, it's an automatic censorship. It's an automatic firing. Um, look at what they did to Kim Iverson, look at what they've done to so many other journalists out there. And now Katie Halper, uh, has recently been a, uh, has gone, is going through this as well because she went to cover a story on Israel and calling it an apartheid state. And she was censored and canceled, uh, by the Hill. So I want to pull up, um, her commentary on it, because I think it's only fair that we hear from her perspective. But I am annoyed that this keeps happening, and yet we pride ourselves as a nation that respects free speech, freedom of the press, and we never follow through. It's that our press outlets are controlled by corporations. Before I play this video, Lauren, I just want to get your thoughts. Well, before we play it, um your perspective on this because we, we we talked about this before the show yeah no it's and it's something that you're right it just keep coming up over and over and over again somebody reports on something that's not what people want to hear and apparently that is now a fireable offense even if they are bringing the facts so like she talks about the monologue that she wrote for them during the course of this video she talks about that monologue and i actually did go and i watched it and you know it she just brought straight facts. She was like, this is the dictionary definition of that. This is what is happening. And apparently you can't say that. <laughs> you can't say it anymore, which is really frustrating. It's like, but you have, if you have the receipts and the receipts just show something accurate, even if it's not something pleasant, th like that's, that's fine. You, the receipts show something unpleasant. So then guess what? You can return it, like change, change things around. You know, mm -hmm. like you're never nothing is ever going to get better if we just keep hushing everything that we don't like, mm -hmm. you know, hushing it up. It's never nothing will improve. Yeah, I agree. And now, um, again, Katie Halper, I mean, I I don't think what she said was really that offensive. I, I think it's important that, look, if the way you present, the way you talk about a story, I mean, it's it's important but I can't see really uh, what she did wrong. So uh, let's play this and let's hear it from her. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Katie Helper Show. Um, I'm your host, Katie Helper, as you know. And as you all know, uh, I do host, obviously, the Katie Helper Show. I also host Useful Idiots, another podcast and YouTube show. And I recently had started doing some guest co-hosting at Rising, which is a YouTube show hosted by The Hill. I even pitched a show to The Hill, which was a lefty version of The View, which we shot a pilot for last Friday. And for the last three years, I've appeared on The Hill's Rising as a guest once a week to do a weekly segment on media and politics. And I've always really enjoyed working with The Hill. And I felt like I was given the freedom to talk about whatever I wanted to talk about. And I really did see it as a place free of the censorship and the kind of like party line enforcement that defines other corporate media. So uh, as I said, I'd been doing some guest uh, hosting at The Hill and I really enjoyed it. And I hosted this Monday and had already lined up some more hosting events for the near future. And rising hosts do these things called radars, which are basically monologues delivered straight to the camera. So I wanted to deliver a monologue about Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib being criticized by some uh, over comments she made about people who are progressive except on Palestine. And she was slammed for describing Israel as an apartheid state. So my monologue basically defended Tlaib, 
and kind of broke down why Israel is, in fact, an apartheid state. So I wrote my monologue and I delivered it and the hell filmed it, but then they did not air it. And when I pushed back uh, against their not airing it, I was fired, not just as a host, but also as a weekly contributor, which is something I'd been doing again for three years. So I do want to be clear that the producers I worked with were nothing but supportive. They were great and they really wanted their higher ups, their bosses, the executives to do the right thing. Um, but sadly, they wouldn't. And this is obviously really sad and frustrating and disappointing and infuriating. And there's nothing I can do about their decision to not run the monologue. And there's nothing I can do about their decision to stop working uh, with me or to fire me. But what I can do and what I did do was film and release the video that they wouldn't air. So I reached out to an actually progressive, actually independent actually uncensored media outlet called Breakthrough News, and we made the video. So it's going to be uh, coming out tonight at Breakthrough News. You'll be able to find it at Breakthrough News. You'll also then be able to find it at The Katie Halper Show, youtube.com slash The Katie Halper Show. And I'll be talking about this more moving forward, but I just wanted to let people know. And in the meantime, of course, free Palestine and uh, support independent media. And of course, you can support the Katie Halper Show at Patreon. That's patreon.com slash the Katie Halper Show. And please subscribe to this YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the Katie Halper Show. And um, I think that's about it. I mean, I see a lot of comments. That's great. Um, and I really want to thank everyone for being supportive of this show and of independent media. And I really appreciate all the people watching now and all the people who uh, pay attention to this issue, and I know that it's probably uh, infuriating to hear yet another case of censorship over this issue, but uh, don't worry, we're not going anywhere. By we, I mean people who actually talk about these issues, especially the issue of Israel-Palestine, and I also want to uh, express like support, so much support to the people out there covering this who uh, really risk their lives. Obviously, we know like Shireen, uh, Shireen Abu Akhle, who I'm not at all comparing myself to, but obviously there are people out there who cover this issue and in doing so risk their lives. They lose their lives or their livelihood. And so I just want to just pause it here real quick because we have to remember um, there have been a lot of journalists, a lot of journalists and reporters, not only in the United States, but from all the world that's been covering the stories in Palestine, uh, between Israel and the Pal between the Israelis and the Palestinians. And many of these journalists have lost their lives. Many of these journalists' uh, careers were ended short due to, again, <laughs> some of the hostile actions, some, ha, a majority of the hostile actions done by the security forces there. And the thing is, it's, it hasn't really changed that much. And I think it's important that we shine a light on the horrifying conditions that we're seeing in Gaza, in the West Bank. And we have to remember that so long as we, so long as the media is suppressing the different perspective of what's happening there, um, it's not going to go away. People are not going to stop talking about it. And the more you try and hide something, uh, the more people are going to want to investigate it and wonder what is really happening there. Um, this is man's inhumanity to man. And I think what Katie Halper did uh, wasn't wrong. She was in the right to cover this story. Um, but let's face it, The Hill, like many other major media outlets, they have their organizations, they have their per perspective, they have their content, and they have access to politicians, and they don't want to shake up their little apple cart. Um, Lauren, before we play the rest of it, I'd like your commentary on this. Well, for me, it just seems like any time that anyone tries to suggest that Israel might not be the good guys, that's always just going to just ruin them, which is ridiculous um, for a lot of reasons. But I mean, the last time that I actually looked into this, which I because I almost I considered doing a story about about this a couple months back for Hard Lens, and then I ended up deciding to do something a little different but like the all of the stats that i could find like israel has had a lot more civilian kill counts it's had a lot more civilian uh property casualties like they, they've 
done like i mean it's not that palestine hasn't done their share of of bad things to israel in this war as well but like israel has really really slammed palestine hard much harder than it like makes any kind of sense and mut with much higher civilian casualties which you know and then and then you add on to all of those things that people who live in Israel who are Palestinian or who have used to live in Palestine, but now Israel has like encro like creeped their territory forward and now they're living in Israel. They have so much like more difficulties now to like try and live just and just a, their lives. And I think that you're right. It is our duty to shine a light on that and to make it very clear that, you know, there's Israel's not the good guys here um and that to try and anytime anyone says anything against them they're like said they're anti-semitic or something and yeah it's like but it's like but and katie halpert is jewish she's a jewish lady and and so and people are still like saying that she's uh she hates her own people because or she's said something mean about israel it's like you can call out like if you're if you're technically in some kind of box you know, like you're this, you can fit into that kind of box. Oh, you're Jewish. You know, you're, you're a woman, you know, you're blah, blah, blah. It's like, you can still look at the box that you are in and say, Hey, mm -hmm. they did something bad here. Like you're allowed to call them out on that, regardless of whether or not you, you could potentially be a part of that box. Like, and people don't let anybody call out big infrastructure it seems like all the time you know like you know like ca catholic priests get a lot of flack it's like yeah they they did some bad stuff not too long ago and they all just kind of just got moved around and shuffleboarded around and nothing actually changed and you can't say anything against it now because it's like oh we took care of it but it's like not no not necessarily so I, I i no go, go ahead continue sorry i'm mean, just so it's like a tldr just the fact that we're not allowed to call out injustice when we see it and like we're not allowed to call a duck a duck uh, is ridiculous. And you should be if you see something wrong and if you look at, again, dictionary definitions of trauma or um, or apartheid or, you know, concentration camps, it's like you can call it an internment camp if you want. You know, it, that's not what it is. Like it just call it what it is. And if you don't call things truthfully, then they just stay hidden and secret and people get to keep getting away with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I also want to bring up this chat here. It's from Roger Meadows on Rockfin. He says, what I don't understand is why are all you not getting together filing class action lawsuits? YouTube is begging you. Please sue me. Uh, even though this was the hill, but still you guys got standing because you could show injury to your revenue. And the biggest indicator is the CEO's own words interview on 60 minutes where she clearly said she's trying to kick independent media off the platform toward toward. Um, let me just explain the situation here for a lot of our viewers. Um, Roger, you are right. But this kind of uh, fight against YouTube or censorship, it's, it's not as easy as doing a class action lawsuit because we have to remember um, YouTube hasn't said that they are a publisher. They're still a private corporation, even though they're acting like a publisher. Um, it's, it's easy or it's not easy. It's, it does seem logical to try and do something like that, but we have to remember that they have a lot of keys to power, unfortunately. And that's why we do have alternative viewing platforms like Rockfin, Odyssey, Rumble, Twitch, all that kind of good stuff. But um, yeah, I, I it's do, doing something like that. That that is that is a magnitude that requires a lot of planning and to be ready for. So the time to start really should have been years ago to do something like this to prepare for YouTube. I mean, if I could go back in time and warn myself, like, hey, just a heads up. Uh, YouTube is going to be enacting these policies and this year, this year, and this year, you should kind of get ready just to, to move past them. I mean, that's, that'd be something good to do, but yeah, I know it's just, uh, I hear you guys. It's, it's, it, like I said, it's going to get worse, but let's just play the, uh, the rest of the video for Katie, just so she could finish her commentary. But again, it's just messed up what the Hill did to her. I'm going to be fine. Um, this 
you know, I'm not happy about this, but it's fine. I'll be fine. I just wanted to make sure to get the word out there about this and also to make sure that we uh, got the, the video out there that I had made, because I think it's an important thing to show the world that sadly Israel is in apartheid state and we have to push back. And when we encounter censorship, we can't just uh, run away with our tails between our legs. So really excited to be releasing this video and um, you guys can tune in uh, shortly. It'll be released in like four minutes, I think, on Break the News. And then again, I'll be at the Katie Helper Show. Mm -hmm. um, I'll be talking about this more in the future. But for now, I just wanted to leave you all with that. And again, thank you so much for coming. Uh, and thank you so much for supporting independent media. And um, make sure you keep supporting, especially Palestinian journalists um, above all. And uh, we will see you. I'll see you uh, next week. I'm at the, my usual time, Tuesday, at the Katie Halper Show. See you soon. Love you all. Bye and free Palestine. Okay, come down. Right. It is a pretty good video. Like it was. It is. I would. I would recommend watching it. Um. I have to wonder about the environment uh, at the Hill and just really just how quick they were to ask Katie Halper. I mean, um, well, she said that know. like it was the producers wanted to like go for go for it. It was the people above them. Like, it's like the the big wigs in charge. And like shockingly, just like with the Hill, like with Disney, like with every other corporation, the big wigs in charge are cowards and they're just doing their very, very best to keep us all complacent as much as possible by not sharing like the hard truths like or or not trying to get us out of our little narrow field of vision that we're always like being locked into by them so they're just they don't want us to reach for anything greater like they never have like that's why you get the same like movie coming out over and over and over and over again with slightly different names and on a maybe on a different planet or in a different time period, but it's almost always the same stuff. No one is almost no one, I should say, is actually trying to shine lights on anything important. They're trying to keep us just focused in on the you know, unimportant stuff. Yeah. And I, I, th I think in, in the end, um, when it comes down to getting a different perspective, a different voice out there. Again, I said this on the show, this is why we need independent media because, okay, the producers, let's just say, you know, they were totally on board to get that segment out, share it with their viewers and subscribers and everyone else that, you know, follows the hill rising. Um, but it, then again, they were silent. So the thing is, um, we have to remember the media landscape, thanks to, again, the Telecoms Act signed by Bill Clinton. You have corporations that control all the media that you see. So that means they're only going to tell you what they feel you should hear. They're only going to give you a five minute at best uh, video clip of what's happening overseas or why there's a conflict happening in some part of the world. They're not going to go into detail about why, you know, I don't know, U.S. foreign policy, the economic situation. Uh, the current political environment. Um, again, the, you have you have a we have a media landscape that is purposely designed to keep you in the dark. And of course, big tech is in on it too, uh, because again, we have all these um, internal policies done by outlets like YouTube, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. I mean, look what they do to Case Study QB's Twitter page. Case Study QB's Twitter page. Uh, if you go in there incognito, not logged in to Twitter at all, uh, it is you're immediately given a warning sign as though you're entering into a Twitter site or a Twitter page that is dedicated to, I don't know, uh, violent or either that explicit material. All right. And I got to be careful what I could say because, again, this is YouTube. But when you look at the content that Case Study TV is uploading onto his Twitter page, it's clips from Fox News, CNN. MSNBC, CBS, and ABC. So which I got to say then is, okay, wow. Big tech is on this super fast rush of censorship. Corporate media is in full support of censorship. And of course, you got Democratic and Republican lawmakers that are for censorship. But at least uh, Twitter, uh, 
screwed up and dropped the ball and finally revealed that, yeah, corporate media, they are danger. They are, uh, you know, it is uh, it's controversial to watch it because guess what? It's not factual. And <laughs> Twitter inadvertently is proving my point that um, corporate media should be viewed with skepticism. And again, shout out to Case Study QB, who, again, his Twitter page is wrongly being censored. And that is uh, unfair and unjust. Uh, I think that it's uh, a sign of the times that we're living in. And I wish I could look at all of you and say things are going to get better. But look, they silenced Kim Iverson. You know, they were they're silencing now Katie Halper. Uh, thankfully, we got voices like Brianna Joy Gray on the hill. Uh, but I'm now I'm starting to wonder uh, when is uh, when is she going to be put on the chopping block to be censored or silenced? Because it wouldn't surprise me. Um, and then even here on YouTube, like there are days where I do wonder, like, hmm, will we still have a show? Will we still have a channel? And the same thing goes for Chicago Corner as well. And these are things that always uh, impact me because I'm wondering, OK, can I still take care of my team? If I can't take care of my team, what happens with the future of Harlan's media? What happens uh, to everything that we've done here? And it is it is a nerve-wracking environment to be in, but I love what I do, and as does everyone else in independent media, because we have been doing this consistently. It's just we're on this uphill climb, and all information is being silenced. Uh, all information is being twisted in a way to prevent people from finding out what's happening. I mean, look what they did with the Hunter Biden laptop story. Uh, Twitter and Facebook were lifting up mountains to prevent people from sharing that article. And all of corporate media was saying that was fake news. But then what happened just a few months ago? Turns out the story is real. Big tech, Twitter, Facebook, corporate media, uh, the Democratic Party were all on board of twisting that story of saying that it was fake. And, oh, the Hunter Biden laptop story is real. And, gee, yeah, could it have affected the election? The answer is yes. But... These corporate outlets, big tech, corporate media, the Democratic Party had no right to silence a story, especially during a key election cycle. Uh, I want to give you the final word on all of this, Lauren. I'm I like I said before, though, it's I don't appreciate being kept in the dark. I don't appreciate not being able to trust uh, the news, I would prefer it if I would be able to look at something and be like, oh, yes, I can trust this to be fair and unbiased. Um, but but you can't. Everybody's got an angle. Everybody has a story that they are trying to push. No one is taking the time to go and look at the other side of things or the fourth side of things. There are some things that have multiple sides and no one is really, it seems like, trying to to focus in on anything. And again, we are always being pushed a story of there's a good guy and there's a bad guy. And if you say that the person that everybody else thinks is the good guy is not, then you're in trouble. And like, even if you've got the facts on your side, you're still going to be screwed. Um, like the, like Israel is, if, if the shoe fits, you know, it's an apartheid state, like the, they are treating the Palestinians who live there horribly and they are acting in the war that, that that's going on just unconscionably like it's terrible like it's really really awful some of the stuff that is happening over like and we are not allowed to talk about it like we're not allowed to to find it to see it to acknowledge that maybe they did something wrong um we just keep you know like because we give them money so because we gave them money we have to like buckle down you know, yeah. we we gave them money and aid. So now we have to buckle down and be like, oh, yep. Nope. They are definitely in the right forever and always. Uh, Palestine is full of bad people and we need to end it or something. You know, it's like and we can't say anything against it. But, you know, I mm -hmm. agree with Katie, like free Palestine, like they. Sorry, but they need to be their own country and like we have to stop. I don't know. I believe in stopping injustice, even mm -hmm. if it's against someone who. Uh, even if the people being unjust have like are historically, we're not allowed to talk about it, like regardless of who it is, you're not allowed to talk about, um, you know, like people can make mistakes, like groups and groups and groups can make all sorts of mistakes and they can be awful. And it doesn't matter if who it is, which mm -hmm. was poorly said, but, <laughs> you know, yeah. I got upset. <laughs> no, I think, I think we all should be upset. And the thing is too, folks, just, 
I guess from here on out, just double check and triple check that you're still subscribed to your favorite independent media network because guess what? You can be unsubscribed. I still get emails and messages from people. Hey, I was unsubscribed. There's nothing I could do to stop that. And unfortunately, uh, it is going to continue to get worse.